Hi everyone, this is Anthony Morganti. Today we're going to edit a RAW file in Apple Photos on an iPhone. We're going to start out with an image that looks like this and end up with an image that looks like this. Okay, I have Apple Photos open on my iPhone and I have some images on there and a couple of the images are from my Nikon Z7 II and we're going to edit one of those images. Now in a previous video I demonstrated how to get images from a camera such as the Nikon Z7 II into Apple Photos. If you haven't seen that video, in the description below this video I'll have a link to a playlist. That playlist will contain all the videos I've done on Apple Photos. Now, I want to edit this last um, image here, so I'm just going to tap on it. And I can't really see the entire image, so I'll just tap on the image again, and then I could get a look at the entire images, image. This is an unedited RAW file. So I'm going to do all my editing on my iPhone. So I'm going to tap on it again to get that top and bottom panel back. And we're going to click on edit in the top right hand corner. And when we do that, we'll get all the editing tools. And this is pretty straightforward. You really have two sections. You have this section on the far right. And you can see that there's a dial. This is our actual editing. From here, we edit the tone, the color. We could add a vignette, we could sharpen it, do noise reduction all from there. Below that, we have filters. These are more or less presets. So if you're in a hurry and you just want to try a preset, or as Apple calls them, a filter, you would click here and you could just click through the different filters and see if there's one that you like. If there's none that you like, just go back to the very top one. That is your unedited image. Below that is the crop tool and we'll click on that. And you could just grab a corner, let's say, or just grab it from the bottom, or just grab anywhere on the uh, edges of the image to crop it. If it's a little crooked, there's a little scale on the right-hand side, and you could take that scale and you could like, just move it to straighten the image. And this one's just very slightly crooked. So I'm going to straighten it with that. And when you're done with the crop tool, you could just click on like the upper adjustment that dial up there and that will save your crop as is and then you could now edit the image now that's one part of the edit screen those are those three controls on the far right once you're in uh, the edit tool itself you'll notice that there's a bunch of different controls and as I scroll through them you could see them and as you make one active it at the bottom of the screen it tells you what it is this is just an auto adjustment. If you want to try that, tap on it and it will do an auto adjustment. You also could fine tune that auto adjustment with the scale. So you can move the scale on the right to fine tune it the way you want it. If you don't like the auto adjustment at all, just tap on that magic wand again and you'll turn off the auto adjustment. As we scroll up, we can see the next is exposure and this of course affects exposure. I'll leave that off for a moment. Next is brilliance. Um, what I tend to do if I edit on my iPhone, um, by the way, I'm using an iPhone 12 Pro Max in case you're wondering. Um, what I tend to do is jump around. So you can go in order and they're, they're really set up in the order that most people probably would want to edit their images. But I tend to jump around a little bit. For instance, I found on an image like this that I exposed for the sky, so much of the image is dark. I found that brilliance like works pretty well. So I'll I'll do a brilliance adjustment right away. And you can see that considerably I moved it considerably to open up the shadows basically. Then below that are highlights, and I could rein in the highlights or like boost the highlights here. And I think I'm going to rein in the highlights a little bit. Below that our shadows and I could open up the shadows or make the shadows darker 
I think the shadows are pretty spot on, so I'm going to leave those alone. Put that back at zero. Below that is contrast, and I could add contrast or make it flatter. I think here this is pretty much spot on as well, so I'm going to leave that alone. Or near zero, that's good enough. Below that is the brightness control. Now the difference between the brightness control and at the top that exposure control is the exposure will brighten or darken every single pixel equally whereas the brightness control will um, will if I can find it there it is the brightness control will bring the highlights let's say if you're making everything brighter it will bring the highlights right to the point where they're almost clipping and then as you keep moving it it won't clip the highlights similarly if you're making the image darker, it will bring the shadows right to the point where you're almost crushing the shadows. But then if you keep moving the slider so you're making the image darker, it won't crush the shadows. So it's a little bit more of an intelligent exposure adjustment. Uh, so you can see if I keep moving it up, it, it's going to bring those highlights almost to the point they're clipping, but it won't allow them to clip. And similarly with shadows, although it looks really dark, supposedly it wouldn't crush the shadows. So I'm not going to move that one. I think the brightness of the image overall is fine. Now the black point, I do want to make uh, the darker parts of the image a little darker. So I'll just move this down. And this is all the black point does. It'll make the blacker or the darker points of the image just a little darker in this case. Next we have saturation. That will um, increase or decrease the saturation of every color equally. So if you move it way up, you'll you'll have the run the risk of oversaturating some colors. If you move it all the way down, you'll have a black and white image. It works every single color equally. The vibrance control, on the other hand, which is directly below that, that will bring colors just to saturation, but it won't oversaturate the colors. Also, if you move it the other way, you won't get a totally black and white image. What it will do is colors that were saturated will still have some saturation in them. And colors that um, didn't have much color in them at all, that will turn monochrome. So in this case, I'm going to use the vibrance control and just add a little bit of color to it. Next is the warmth slider. If I move this slider up, I'll make it cooler. And if I move it down, I'll make it warmer. I want to make this just slightly warmer. The image is a little bit cool. Next is the tint control. This you could, you know, give it a tint more towards green or more towards magenta. In this case here, I'm not going to adjust that. Next to that is sharpness control. What I recommend when you adjust the sharpness of your image is that you pinch and zoom in on something that should have detail in it, like this building in the background because it's very easy to over sharpen an image. So you could like move this control and move it way up and it's going to take a second to kick in. And as you look at it, you could say, look now and say, well, that's possibly over sharpened. So I'm going to just dial it back a little bit like that. And then when you're satisfied uh, with it, you could pinch and zoom it back out, but I would leave it zoomed in for now because the next control is definition and this one too gives you a mix you know basically the image a little sharper and you'd want to be zoomed in when you're looking at that and then stay zoomed in for the next adjustment which is noise reduction now this was shot at ISO 64 on my Nikon Z72 and I'm very familiar with that camera it really has no noise uh, so I really don't have to worry about any noise reduction now to get it back to full screen just pinch and zoom it so you have the entire screen and finally the last control is the vignette control if I move it up I'll get a white vignette and if I move it down I'll get a darker vignette so I'm just going to add a very slight uh, vignette now if you want to see a before and after just touch the image and let go and there's the before and then it will automatically after a few seconds flip back to the adjusted image so there's before and there's after before, after. So when you're satisfied that you uh, have it processed the way you want, just click the Done button in the top right hand corner. 
and you'll see it saying saving photo in the middle uh, Apple photos on the iPhone or on the computer or on your iPad it's a non-destructive raw editor so it's actually not writing to the actual raw file it's saving all these edits into what it calls the catalog and whenever you view that raw file in Apple photos on your computer iPhone or iPad it then applies the edits to the to the JPEG you're viewing on your on your um, device whether it's the iPhone iPad or computer so it takes a second to save those adjustments uh, to um, the catalog now again I'll just tap or touch the image not tap I'm sorry just touch the image and you'll get rid of all the bars on the top right and you could see that there's our edited image now you're when you're ready to share it with the world you could just tap right here and then you could click next and it will prompt you how you want to share it through um, email or message or something like that and you'll be able to share it and that's it that's how you go about editing a raw file on an iPhone I'm gonna do one more video in this series we're gonna uh, edit a raw file on an iPad and then I think I'll wrap it up unless someone has a better idea you'd like to you know make a suggestion let me know in the comments below thank you everyone who watches my videos I really do appreciate it talk to you guys soon <music>